In this video, I will try to wow you with a technique that relies almost entirely on ideas from linear algebra. And by the end of the course, we will be able to explain all that will for now seem like magic. Now, the technique that I'd like to talk about is called Gaussian quadrature. And it has to do with integrating functions or equivalently finding areas under curves. It is named after Carl Friedrich Gauss, the great German mathematician. And it's very exciting to be able to come face to face with one of the all time greats so early in the course and to look forward to some insight into his genius by the end of the course. Now, if your calculus is a little bit rusty, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. We will actually use almost no calculus until the later parts of the course. And even in the case of Gaussian quadrature, the problem might come from calculus, but the ideas that make Gaussian quadrature work have very little to do with calculus and a whole lot with linear algebra. So suppose that you're interested in finding the area under the graph from minus one to one of a function such as cosine of x squared, whose antiderivative is very difficult to find. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus, like you were taught in your calculus course, may be impossible. However, suppose that you're not really interested in the exact expression, but would be perfectly happy with a reasonable numerical estimate. How would you compute that estimate? Well, one of the simplest thing to do is the following, is to break up the domain into equal portions and then replace the exact area with the following rectangles. Let me draw all of them in. <laughs> there you go. And so you see that the sum of all of the rectangles misses the actual true area by just a little bit. We're missing some here, but then we're gaining it back on the other side. So approximately the area, the sum of the areas of the rectangles equals the actual area. So it might be a very good numerical approximation. So how would we actually compute the areas of the rectangles? Well, it's very easy. The area of each rectangle is the value of the function at the left edge of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle, which we can denote by the letter H. And in this case, it equals 0 0.2. So the, the formula, the algorithm, let's call it the rectangle algorithm, is to multiply the value of the function at the left edge of the interval by 0.2 and then add the 10 rectangles together. So this will require only 10 evaluations of the function. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the value at the last point doesn't count. Okay, just 10 evaluations. And of course, the more rectangles, the better. But we don't want to do too much work because we're not interested in a super accurate estimate, just a very reasonable estimate. Now, of course, you can do better than that if you replay, if you do use not the rectangles, but let's say, let's use a different color, these trapezoid. That's one thing that you can do that's a little bit better than the rectangles. Or instead of picking the left point, you can perhaps pick the midpoint and use these rectangles, which you can see are better approximators. But, you know, all of, you know, both of these things will actually lead to significantly better results. But let's stick to the simplest thing uh, for the purposes of our comparison with Gaussian quadrature. Because Gaussian quadrature uh, looks to do much better than all of these approaches. So here's the Gaussian quadrature approach, and it has absolutely nothing to do with approximating the area with rectangles or trapezoids or any other shape. Gaussian quadrature comes from an entirely different realm of ideas. So according to Gaussian curvature, we can take advantage of our freedom to sample our function, in other words, evaluate the few values of our function at arbitrary points. They don't need to be equally spaced. And instead of multiplying each value of the function by the same number 0.2, maybe we can multiply them by smarter values and then add them together. That was smarter values multiplied by the value of the function at the cleverly chosen points. So Gaussian curvature prescribes where to place those points. Let's limit ourselves to 10 points. And what numbers to multiply the values of the function at those points by. 
So you can find those values by the Gaussian quadrature algorithm. It prescribes how to find those special numbers. And by the way, those special numbers are quite universal. They're not specific to the function you're trying to integrate. They work very well for a very wide range of functions. So you can compute them on your own, or you can simply look them up on the web because they're documented on numerous web pages. So that's what I did in the demo that I'm about to show you, implemented entirely in Google Docs. So a very simple demo. So what do you think? Will Gaussian quadrature be a little better than the rectangle approach or a lot better? Let's take a look. All right, here we go. Now this is the true value of the area, which can be obtained by evaluating this command right here in Simpy Gamma, a very useful online tool for these kinds of calculations. So on the left here, we have an implementation of the rectangle algorithm, and on the right, Gaussian quadrature. So these are the not so special x's at which our function will be evaluated in the rectangle algorithm. And then we'll multiply each one of those values by 0.2 and add the products together. And that will be our rectangle algorithm estimate for the area. In Gaussian quadrature, however, our function will be evaluated at these very specially chosen x's. And then each of the values will be multiplied by these Gaussian weights. So other than the x's and the numbers by which the values of the functions will be multiplied, the two algorithms are actually very similar. In both algorithms, we need to multiply this number by the value of the function at this number. And then this needs to be done at each of the 10 points. And the products need to be added together. And this produces the estimate. So let's see how close it is. Well, it's actually not bad at all. The true value is 1.809 and the approximate value is 1.797. So it's very close. Let's see just how close. So we need to subtract the approximate value from the true value and the error is 0 0.01. So it's a little over 100. So it's not bad at all especially considering how little work we did. Now let's do the same thing in Gaussian quadrature, which is multiply this number by the value of the function at this number right here. Do the same thing at each of the 10 points. And then add together the results. And the Gaussian quadrature estimate is all right, now wait a second. It appears that all of these digits are correct. Is that even possible? Let's look at more digits and see if there is any discrepancy. All right, so we're finally seeing some incorrect digits and the value of the error in the case of Gaussian quadrature is once again, subtract the approximate value from the true value and it is this small number. It's so accurate that it's actually hard to believe that this is possible. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 zeros. So Gaussian quadrature is almost 100 billion times more accurate than the rectangle algorithm. Now, is that the sort of improvement that you expected? I don't think so. All right. I don't know what else I can say about Gaussian quadrature other than wow. By sampling our function at only 10 carefully selected points, we were able to approximate the area under this curve to within one part in a trillion. That's a truly astounding level of accuracy. And this is a tribute not only to Gauss's accomplishment, but to the power of linear algebra. So I really hope that this demo has contributed to your excitement about this subject.